Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna share with you how you can put a little bit of that farmhouse feel into your home through dollar store decor. Lately I am obsessed with that rustic farmhouse or like cottage feel. You can totally tell by my Pinterest page. But my house is dated and it's really contemporary so I'm not about to renovate or spend a ton of money on something that may be a passing fad, who knows. But I can put a little farmhouse feel into this home just by shopping at my local dollar store. So let's start with my tablescape. I am gaga for this teal, like so obsessed and almost everything on this table is from the Dollar Tree. These plates and these chargers were only a dollar and I love the idea of using these little Dollar Tree succulents as placeholders. I just washed them and wrote all of our names and stuck them inside and I broke off the bottom so they sit nicely on the plate. I couldn't find a table runner, but these are just placemats from the Dollar Tree. I just put two of them together, and at just $2, I think it looks fantastic. For my centerpiece, I already had this glass milk jug, I guess you call it, downstairs. So I just filled it with some succulents from the Dollar Tree. And then, of course, mason jars. You have to have mason jars. And they're just painted with chalk paint. You can find mason jars at the Dollar Tree store or you can find them of course at you know your local grocery store you probably already have some just a quick coat of chalk paint and then scratch them off for that really rustic farmhouse look I wrapped the top in twine and I just plopped in a dollar store hydrangea I took a scrap piece of wood from my husband's shop and just added some old handles that we already had gave it of course a quick <laughs> coat of Annie Sloan's chalk paint and then distressed it a little bit and I think it really looks great on top of these Dollar Tree placemats. Because I was only shopping at the Dollar Tree or using stuff I already owned, this whole table cost me less than $20. Let's talk about the mantle. Adding some greenery is like a must for that fresh farmhouse or cottage feel. And this pot that I stuck, I already had this, you guys know I made those bunnies out of it, but this pot I got from the dollar store. Believe it or not, I got it from Dollarama for just a couple of dollars. Not only is it so big, but it's that, you know, metal tin and it's already distressed. I just cannot, I'm gaga for this. When I saw this there, I was like, oh, I have to buy it. And of course my dollar store birds. They have these at both Dollarama and the Dollar Tree. They're pretty hideous, but a quick coat of Annie Sloan chalk paint and you can turn it into an awesome little rustic spring decor. I just filled a birdcage that I already had with Dollar Tree succulents and this greenery ball is from Dollarama. You can make topiaries from the Dollar Tree. I just broke a stick off from my backyard tree and hot glued this Dollarama topiary ball on top. Right now at Dollarama you can find these three little tin pots inside this tray for just $2.50. I gave it a quick coat of chalk paint and I love the way it turned out. Can we just talk about these pillows for a second? I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with felt flower pillows. And while it isn't traditional farmhouse decor, it is dollar store decor. And it is the perfect way of sort of tying in all the color schemes that you want for like pennies. It's so inexpensive. This pillow was just $3 from Dollarama here in Canada. And you can find felt from the dollar store too, but I got two meters of different color felts for just four dollars for my local fabric store for under ten dollars i was able to make two pillows that really match my decor i like gray and teal but i have chocolate brown leather furniture that i'm pretty much stuck with so this was a great way of tying all those colors together on a super small budget you can make your own felt flower pillows. So simple, no sewing, just hot glue. You can either use a pillow that you already have or pick one up from the dollar store. Crazy, right? And in under an hour, you can have two gorgeous pillows that look really expensive. And the best part is they really match your decor. So I'm gonna give you the free printable that has like the template and I'm gonna show you quickly how to make them with this quick DIY. So even if you're not crafty, you need felt pillows in your life. So watch this quick, super quick tutorial. 
The only thing you need for this project is some felt, a pillow form, even a pillow you already have, and a template. I'm going to put the link to the template below. It's in the Spring Printables pack. So you're going to go ahead and cut out the large petal template and then the small petal template trace it out and cut them out of your felt. Whatever color you want, I mean whatever color you want to go for, go ahead and do that. And once you have all your petals cut out, you need to cut out the circle for your base. Then you take a petal, you start with the large petals, you take it and you fold it into the middle and then over top again and add a dab of glue, fold it into the middle, another dab of glue and then fold it back. And you only do this on one side to create you got it, your petal. And then go ahead and glue all your large petals and all your small petals. Once you're done, you add glue to the circle base and then just start like attaching them in a circle. You kind of get the idea. It's pretty easy. And then more glue over top and the smaller petals, you're going to go around with two rows. So again, just sticking them over top and then going ahead with the second row over top. And you can add as many or as few of these petals that you want just with the spacing. Now I'm doing something a little different with the center. I'm cutting strips of the brown and then cutting them in half, folding them in half and pushing them on a needle and thread. And so again, um, you're going to cut a strip, cut it in half. It's about four inches long, three inches long probably. Fold in half and then put them, like string them all together basically to make a little, you know, little pom-pom ball. And I added some teal on the outside, doing it like exact same way, folding in half, putting it through a pin, hot gluing it together, and then you are done your fantastic felt pillow. So easy and super inexpensive. So I originally started out making an entirely different centerpiece for my table using all dollar store stuff, but then I saw those plates those plates from the Dollar Tree and I completely had to change everything because the centerpiece I made didn't match the plates that I bought so I will throw in that old centerpiece that I made originally just to show you for inspiration if you have a long box or if you like that style as well again everything from the dollar store I'm like so into dollar store decor it's like a challenge you can go there and you can make something beautiful for just a couple of bucks and you know it's like yeah I made that from the dollar store. So head to your local dollar store today and see if you can come up with some farmhouse or cottage decor. So thank you guys so much for watching and make sure you hit that subscribe button for more DIY organizing and decorating videos each and every week. See you next time. So thank you guys so much who have stayed to the end. Today I wanna to talk about just my parenting fail. <laughs> it's just, I have a lot of parenting fails. But it's just Milo. <laughs> Milo right now is my parenting fail. He is just, he's four and he is challenging. He's like a stubborn, just impulsive and he just doesn't care what I say and he does what he wants. It's his way or the highway. And he's pretty much karma for me because I used to judge other parents and I say this all the time. I used to like... I'd see a kid having a temper tantrum in public and I would instantly be like, well, you should discipline. You know what I mean? I'd have those thoughts or that judgment of those parents because my kids were so well behaved. My girls are like amazeballs, incredibly well behaved kids all the time. And I thought that was my parenting. No, my friends, that's personality. <laughs> that has nothing to do with me. So if you have one or two or three kids who are the most well-behaved children ever. Don't think on your high horse that it's all you, my friends, because I parented them all pretty much the same and Milo's just crazy. So we, I, I drove him to school today and we walk up and he does this almost every time at drop off. So I'm talking to him about it the whole way there on the car ride. Usually he rides the bus, but sometimes I do drop him off and sometimes, you know, he won't get on the bus. Half the time he refuses to get on the bus, so I drive him, but almost every time I walk him to school, we get there and um, we talk about it the whole way, how it's gonna be so fun and we build it up and we're excited and he's not gonna have a fit today. And he's like, no mommy, I'm not gonna have a fit today. And if he doesn't have a fit, this is the rewards that he gets or whatever. I've tried everything. I've tried grounding, I've tried screaming, I've tried bargaining with the kid. Anyways, we get there, he sees the gate to go into school, and it's screaming meltdown. 
Today it was smacking me, hitting me in the face. He was running away. Of course it's in front of all the drop off Lulu moms. And I'm that mom. Every time they see me coming, they whisper, they snicker because yeah, my kid's having a holy terror of a meltdown because he does not want to go to school. And it's not that some horrible thing has happened at school. It's not that he's been traumatized. It's like he freaking hates school. <laughs> he wants to be home with me. I was a stay at home mom. He didn't really go to daycare. He didn't do anything. Thing. We just hung out all the time and now he's like a little mommy suck and that's he if I even go to the grocery store without him It's freaking meltdown zone the kid the kid the kids killing me So he's screaming he hit me in the face multiple times and if we weren't in public That kid's butt would be 20 shades of red. I know what you're thinking spanking is bad listen sometimes but the thing is, yeah, we, I occasionally spank our children, not the girls, they're too old, but when they were younger and just being completely irrational or like running off into traffic or disrespecting me by smacking me in the face or you know what I'm saying? I'm going to tan that kid's butt, but I can't because we're in public. And here's the truth. It doesn't matter anyways because... He's not thinking about consequences. He's not thinking about, you know, that mom's going to go ballistic. He's thinking, I don't want to go to school and I'm going to do whatever the heck it's going to take to not go to school. And as a parent lately, his just uncontrollable behavior, it's breaking me down. I took him to the dentist two days ago. He refused to get his teeth cleaned. Like, Reef, screaming, running, refused to get on the table. And part of it might be the whole going like the trauma thing about going to the hospital and getting held down. But I think a bigger part of it is just if he does not want to do something, nobody is going to make him do it no matter what. And I'm reading all these parenting books and I'm like, I'm just like a parenting book junkie. And you know, it's all about discipline or positive reinforcement or you know, then there's those ones that don't break their spirit because they're gonna grow up to be strong-willed, amazing but uh, kids. But in the freaking meantime, <laughs> I, the dentist actually said to me, can't you control your son? And I was like, Pfft. You give it a go, right? Like, what? I'm just, I'm dying here. So, he's a good boy. He is a good boy. And you hear this from those parents with those crazy nanny 911 children. They're like, oh, he's such a good boy. And it's just, and, they're, and you're like, you spoil him. And that's, listen, peoples, I don't know what's going on here. I used to judge. I have two angels and then Milo and he is a good boy but when he does not want to do something he just doesn't you can't negotiate you can't bribe you can't trick you can't it's like he's not dumb he's not doing it he says he's not doing it you can't make him end of story <laughs> so I was just like so that's my life that's what I'm living with right now it's just uh Judgment so I dropped him off anyways. I just what do you do? Here's what I do. I pick him up punching me in the face and screaming I set him down. I lock the gate. I walk away and the teacher's like bye mom And he's like Rah! Screaming and I get in my car and I drive past him and all the other kids are in the class or in the school And he's still screaming and that poor teacher that poor poor teacher you're going to school End of story. Will he grow out of it? I sure freaking hope so because I may not last. So I just thought I'd share that with you. The mo I'm sure you're gonna have parenting advice. <laughs> of course you are. That's fine. I'll take it. Give it to me. Give me your parenting advice. Who knows? Something I haven't tried may work and I, I wanna try everything because this is embarrassing and I feel judged and I feel like I'm failing him as a parent because <laughs> it's not working out so good. But I also want to say, don't judge. I guess my message here in this long-winded little rant about my monster is not to judge other parents. Be kind. Be kind, drop-off line moms. Be kind, Lulus, because you may just have one one day. Come
Karma's a bitch, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.